Well, so in our earlier lecture, we defined a space curve, uh, which was in fact a map from an interval a b into r 3. So, what happens is that you take an interval a b and you deform it into r 3 to get a shape like this this shape is the path of the curve. So, the curve itself is a map from an open interval or closed interval into the space R 3 and therefore, every point of the curve will be a vector of R 3 and this vector will be a function of the parameter t the variable that varies on the interval a b is called the parameter. So, the equation of the curve becomes r equal to r t with t lying in the interval a b. In particular, if I take this map to be 1 1, the curve looks like this, but if I allow it to be any map, any continuous map from a b to r 3, then the curve will look like this. So, this is not 1 to 1, but you can see in this case that uh, if you restrict your map to a smaller sub interval, uh, still it will be 1 to 1. So, a formal definition of a curve comes out to be a locally 1 to 1, a locally 1 to 1 map from interval a b into r 3 is called a curve. Locally 1 to 1, we will take it continuous also. a locally 1 to 1 continuous map from a closed interval a b into r 3 is in fact a curve. But throughout we will be assuming that it is not just continuous, it is differentiable. We are assuming the map to be differentiable because we want to uh, look into the geometry of the curve. So, in order to study the geometry of a curve, uh, we need to have uh, the notion of differentiability also. So, you we need to consider the derivative. So, the derivative of r with respect to the parameter t will be denoted by r dot. Okay. If you are computing it at a point t naught, then this is written as r dot t naught. Since r t you have observed is a vector in r 3, so, it will have three components say x, y and z. These are the three components of the vector r. Since r depends on t, each of the component x, y, z will also be functions of t. Here you must keep in mind that x, y, z are real valued function of a real variable t. So, x, y and z all of them are real valued function on the interval a b okay, and they are called the components of the curve all right. Now, if you want to look at the components uh, of the this vector, this vector is in fact the tangent vector to the curve. All these things we have already observed, this is the tangent vector of the curve drawn at the point drawn at t equal to t 0. And if you want to see its component, you just differentiate these components. So, they will turn out to be d x upon d t at t naught d y upon d t at t naught and d z over d t at t naught. 
these will be the components of the tangent vector r dot at t naught of course. All right, so this is the tangent vector. Now uh, the derivative, if this derivative up to order uh, up to order say n exists, we will say our curve is regular of order n. So this is also a notion you should keep in mind that a curve is said to be regular. A curve is regular if the derivatives of r r t rather exist derivative of r t up to order n n exist and the first order derivative is non zero this is the tangent vector we assume that this is non zero for all t for all t in the interval a b if at some point t this derivative is uh, zero we will not say it's regular we will call we will say that the curve has a singularity at a point t naught all right so this is about the regularity of a curve now uh, then we introduce what you call natural parameter natural parameter we introduce by considering the length of the curve from the initial point A to a variable point T. So, uh, of hmm? uh, because I will be needing it, so I am recalling it. So, this we have already done. So, this thing becomes a function of T and it is a monotonically increasing function, it is a 1 1 function, and therefore, it is inverse that I will say T is a function of s also this is monotonically increasing one to one function of s you have already taken r to be a function of t so r becomes a function of t and t becomes a function of s so you can say r becomes a function of s so what you have finally that r is a function of a new variable s this new variable is also a parameter we call it a natural parameter of the curve. So, S defined in this relation is called the natural parameter. Of the curve if you call this curve as curve C. So, this is the natural parameter of the curve C. Now, uh, if R is a differentiable function of T, then R will also be differentiable function of S. So, if you differentiate R with respect to S, let us see what happens. So, first of all notation, uh, I will be denoting the derivative of r with respect to s by the symbol r dash. Okay. So, this should be kept in mind and now I can use the chain rule r is a function of t and t is a function of s. So, by chain rule I can write it like this what you can observe over here in relation number 1 that d s over d t you can see over here that d s over d t is mod r dot. If you differentiate both sides of 1 you will be getting it and this implies that d t over d s is 1 upon mod r dot. So, using this relation over here, 
you will be getting 1 upon mod r dot and dt over ds is mod r dot and this is the vector r dot okay so what you get is that r dash is equal to r dot divided by its magnitude r dot r dot we have already seen is a tangent vector to the curve and therefore r dash is also a tangent vector and moreover it is a unit vector. So I would say over here that r dash is a unit tangent vector, unit tangent vector. So this is uh, an advantage uh, of working with the natural parameter because the derivative is a unit tangent vector. So the computation with respect to the natural uh, parameter will become little easier for us. So this is one of an important observation that r dash is a tangent vector and it is a unit tangent vector. Next we considered examples of space curves. The first few examples were uh, the plane curves and then uh, one of the example was that of a space curve. Uh, for example, I told you that all uh, conic sections, they are plane curves, all conic sections. are plane curves and there was another example number 2 and that was a helix uh, a rather a circular helix I consider you can consider any helix but I will take circular helix its equation is given by uh, x component is a cosine theta, y component is a sine theta and z component is some other scalar time theta. This is the parametric equation of a circular helix okay? and we can compute many things about it. For example, if I ask you to find out the natural parameter of the circular helix, you can work it out. So uh, as an exercise, you can check the natural parameter of natural parameter of a circular helix. what it will be. You see, uh, if you look at this equation, you can immediately tell me that this theta is the generalized parameter of the curve because theta varies on an interval uh, between uh, minus pi to pi or anything you can take. So this is the generalized parameter. So if I take the position vector of a point on a circular helix, it will look like a cos theta y is a sin theta okay, and z is b theta. Let me complete this line. So r dot will be nothing but dr over d theta. So in place of t, here our parameter is theta. So this is a vector whose components will be minus a sin theta, a cos theta and b. Okay. Mod r dot you can compute over here. Mod r dot is uh, under root a square sin square theta plus a square cos square theta is simply a square and the last component is square is b square. So mod r dot is square root of a square plus b square. So if, uh, if you want to tell the unit tangent, unit tangent of a circular helix of the circular helix a 
is r dot upon mod r dot this is 1 upon under root a square plus b square minus a sin theta a cos theta and b so that becomes the unit tangent on the right circular helix and if you want to know the natural parameter natural parameter is s equal to integral what is the initial point suppose I take my initial point as 0 for my convenience uh, I can take theta over here varying between 0 to 2 pi so this interval is 0 to pi so between 0 to theta and mod r dot you have seen is the square root of a square plus b square d theta so this is s which is in fact a function of theta so a square plus b square is out so this becomes the square root of a square plus b square integral of d theta is theta between the limit 0 to theta it will be simply theta so s is the natural parameter over here is a square plus b square into theta now if you are interested to express the equation in terms of the natural parameter of the curve you can do that and these equations are called uh, intrinsic equations of the curve <coughs> so intrinsic equation of the curve becomes intrinsic equation of the circular helix is now becomes x equal to a cos what is theta in terms of s theta becomes s upon under root a square plus b square so a cos s upon under root a square plus b square similarly y is a sine s upon under root a square plus b square and the z component is b times uh, theta which is s upon under root a square plus b square so you can see x y and z all these components are functions of s and s is the natural parameter so this is the intrinsic equation of the helix okay how much time I have taken so just check it up whether our recording is okay